What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video here. Uh, today we're going to talk about how to become a phenomenal MD or music director. If you're new to this channel, my name is Justin Owens. I'm a worship leader and songwriter here in Nashville, Tennessee. And on this channel, I love talking about worship. My passion is worship, worship music, worship ministry, talking about how to play songs, how to lead them. Um, and then even just little videos like this, just giving you encouragement and different tools and resources to empower and equip you to be able able to, uh, to serve and minister your, uh, your church and to your worship team efficiently and effectively. And that's kind of what we're going to do today. We're going to take a look at a few things that I want to share with you on how to become a phenomenal uh, MD, right? So the first thing to talk about is what in the world is an MD? I like to look at an MD as kind of like Google Maps or Apple Maps or just maps in general, right? So I think for the most part, most of us, we know where we're going when we get in the car and we take off. Sometimes we don't and we need those specific directions, but most of the time, I think we probably, you know, we usually know where we're going. But it's always helpful to have Google Maps there in the background, even though you do know where you're going, it's always useful to have it there just in case maybe you forget something or you need a reminder or you know, you're know you lost in a conversation with your, your passenger car rider. It's good to have that reminder there to, to help keep your focus uh, in the place that you're going, right? And that's similar to what an MD is. It's, it's someone that is... Uh, a good reminder there in your ear uh, to give you the communicate to give you the information that you might need, or to communicate things to your teammates, your team members that maybe you're wanting to communicate. Um, yeah, I see it kind of like Google Maps. So in this video, we're going to talk about seven different methods to becoming a phenomenal MD. The first one is authority. Now, authority is something that is going to come from the worship pastor or the worship leader, whoever is in charge of the worship team, the worship ministry, that authority has to come from the top down. So let's just say hypothetically you, your name is, I don't know, Joe, uh, you want to become the, the music director. So um, you're going to have to get that authority from the worship pastor, the worship leader, the person in charge. And that authority is not going to come unless there is trust. Trust that is built between you and the person that is in charge in order to be that MD, be that person, because the person that is in the MD is going to hold a lot of responsibility. They're going to hold a lot of leadership and they're going to be communicating a lot. So there's going to have to be trust between that individual and the worship leader, the worship pastor. Another thing is that person is going to have to have experience just in a broad sense of the term. They're going to need to be a very mature, experienced individual when it comes to music, understanding music. There's a lot of stuff that we'll dive into in this video that kind of covers that. But in order to have that authority given to you as the music director, there has to be a relationship. Number one, there's got to be a relationship between you and the worship pastor in order for there to be that trust for them to in, in, instill or endow you with that authority um, so that you can communicate to other people. Because what they're going to be asking is for the team to look to you. They're going to they're going to be asking um, the team to, to listen and trust you as the music director. And if that hasn't happened, that needs to happen. Um, there needs to be clear communication of who is kind of guiding the ship, and it's going to be the M MD. But there's got to be that relationship, and it's got to be a healthy, good relationship between the MD and the worship pastor. But more than that, there has to be good relationship between the MD and the rest of the team. If Brian over here or Susan as the vocalist, if she don't like you as a person, she's probably probably not going to listen to you as the MD. You've got to have a good withstanding relationship with everyone on your team in order for them to trust you and want to listen to what you have to say. And that is going to come over time. That's going to come with relationship. That's going to come with serving and, and giving yourself and caring about other people. And we'll talk about that more in this video. If there is authority and there's trust and there's relationship in all of that in that formula, then they'll follow you. They'll trust you. They'll go where you tell them to go because they believe and trust in you to know that you know what you're saying and what you're doing and it's it's going to be good, right? And so those are the first two. Number one, authority. Number two, relationship. Number three, in order to become a phenomenal music director, you have to learn. 
You have to learn your worship pastor, worship leaders, and your musicians. You got to know those people. You have to know their personalities. You have to know their characteristic traits. You need to know the, um, let's just say your worship leader has certain signs. So for me, my signs are chorus. So is that a C? That's a C. Chorus, bridge, the fist is a bridge for me. Sometimes this is the, like, we're going to the chorus. This is keep going. Whatever we're doing right now, keep going. For uh, Sometimes I'll turn around to the drums and I'm like, do this. Like, give me more. Give me more energy. Um, keep building. Things like that. So learn those signs. Know your musicians. Know their personalities. Know them as people. Know their skill sets as well. If there's, if there's a guitarist that just, he's a good guitarist, but he also kind of struggles staying on time. Um, you got to know that and you've got to, to be able to, um, uh, to plan and to communicate and guide accordingly. So you've got to learn those people and you've got to learn what it is that they have in their skill sets and what it is that they have to offer to have that pool of information and then know what to do with it. And then you also have to learn the language. Like I was saying, different signs, you know, how to speak to the drummers, how to speak to your guitarist, how to speak to your keyboard player, your piano player, um, how to speak to your vocalist. You've got to be able to know how to communicate to them. If you want the drums to, to sound louder, you know, you, you can't turn around and, Hey, like, can you, can you hit the, those little round things on the floor? Can you hit those harder? you're going to look like an idiot, okay? you got to know that those are called toms, right? You've got to know what eighth notes are and quarter notes are and how to hear the difference between the two as well. Things like that, little little details to be able to pick out and hear in the middle of a set and communicate whether something needs to be changed, something is good, something is bad. you got to know that stuff. And that's something that just takes time to, to really invest in if that's something that you want to do. So number three is learn. Number four is always be prepared or ABP. I'm going to put that in parentheses, ABP. And so for that, that, that means you've just got to know the song. So you've, you're equipped with all this other stuff. You know your musicians. You know all that stuff. You've got to know the songs like the back of your hand. You've got to know what the guitar parts are. You need to know what the p- piano parts are. You need to know maybe even what the harmonies are. I don't know. I guess I would say like, that'd be a good thing to just, you just need to know the whole song. You need to know the dynamic of the song, what the song is calling for. You got to know like, what's our vision for what we want to do with the song. Are we wanting to just play it through like it is on the record? Are we wanting to only have the click track and make it our own? And then you've got to be able to communicate that and and know, Hey, like that guitar part was off. You're not playing that right. And to, and to be able to to tell them like, Hey, um, you know, um, uh, Joe, like the, the guitar part was a little bit off timing. Can we run back through that? Um, and, and, and work on that. And they need to be in a place where they trust you and respect you enough to not get upset and be like, what, who are you Karen? Like you're just the piano player. What do you know? Right. They, that, if that's the attitude, then something is massively off. But if they're like, okay, yeah, like, uh, uh, let, let's try it again. If they're more open to it, that means they trust you, they respect you, and you're in a good place. And that's where you want to be. So number four, ABP, always be prepared, know those songs. Number five is ABA or always be aware. One thing that I have utilized in the past is I've, I've communicated to my team that during prayer time, don't close your eyes. Keep your eyes open because if we're on stage as a worship team and the pastor or a speaker, someone is praying, there may, meet, may need to be something that's communicated during that time when everyone else has their eyes closed. Um, that's a time to communicate something visually, uh, you know, where it's like, like, hey, Joe, don't play that, right? Like that's that's okay to do. But if their eyes are closed, right? Or like if you as the MD is you've got your eyes closed and your worship pastor is trying to get your attention, yo, hey, keep your eyes open. Tell the rest of your team, hey guys, during prayer time, don't close your eyes. Be in a in a prayerful state, right? But don't close your eyes. That way, if there's something that needs to be communicated between the, between us that can't be spoken, uh, which doesn't make sense if you are an MD, you probably have in ears and you're speaking in a mic. Um, it, it's just good. It's just good practice. Okay. So watch your musicians. Keep your eyes on the worship pastor at times. Like you fo- you're following him. You're following the drummer. You're communicating things. Also, keep your eyes on the audience as well. Is the song that we're doing connecting? 
are people singing it? Is there something that's off? Are we off time? Um, like what's going on out there? And be able to communicate that because if you're in the middle of a song and your worship pastor is feeling like, I'm going to go spontaneous, but like no one's singing and it's always already really awkward, you might want to tell, hey, uh, Justin, the worship, worship, Mr. Worship Leader, uh, no one's singing the song. Uh, maybe we should stop. You know, you've got to be able to assess that, to be aware of that, to see that, sense that, have the knowledge to um, uh, to know it and communicate it. Number five, A, B, A, always be aware. Number six is grow. You as an individual, as a music director, as a person, number one, need to be growing spiritually. You need to be in the word. Your primary purpose and the your primary why is to give glory to God no matter what you do, especially in worship. You're, you're bringing praises to him. Um, but you need to grow both spiritually but also in your skill set as well. Every week when you get off that stage, if you have a live stream and you're able to go back and, and look and say, Okay, what did I do wrong? How can I be better? You got to have that mentality because you need to be getting better. We're never ever going to be able to reach our fullest max potential. There's always places and things that we can improve upon, whether that's in our personalities and our skill sets, a new thing that we can learn, a new way to communicate. Um, be aware of that and um, you know just just do it. Just just grow, learn, and grow and implement those things so that you can be better, be a better musician, and be a better person. And then lastly, number seven be selfless. You need to be a selfless person beginning because you're a Christian, but just in general, be selfless on stage. Be thinking about other people. How can we as a team of very talented individuals use our giftings to glorify the Lord? And if you're if you're all about yourself and what you can do on guitar or on piano or how you can shine vocally, like you're you're not gonna make a good MD at all. You're not gonna make a good teammate team member to begin with. I've worked with people that were very most definitely like narcissistic and conceited and all they cared about was what they wanted and what they could do and what they thought was best. And it's just, it's really tough to work with. And if that's you and that can be all of us at times, we can all, all be selfish, like, like check yourself and remind yourself, this is not about me. This is about the bigger picture, which is about glorifying the Lord. And if you as an MD are that person, then kudos to you. It, it You've got to be selfless. You've got to know how can I serve people? What's the best way I can serve my teammates and my team members so that we as a team can serve our church? And then also be nice. Like You just need to be a nice person as well. If you're not nice, you're probably not going to be a good MD. And that was actually my wife's recommendation, which I just asked her, like, hey, because she's our MD for our worship team. Uh, I'll throw up a couple photos here. Uh, that's me there on the, the left there. That's our worship pastor, Drew. Um, one of our vocalists, Lauren, and then Jess is back in the left corner. She plays keys and she's our, our music director for the worship team. And she does a phenomenal job. And Jess is very nice. She's very selfless and she just, she's a really good communicator and she does an excellent job at MDing. So those are the seven tips I would give to becoming a phenomenal uh, music director. And uh, I encourage you to implement those things. I'm going to list them below as well. These are just some tips that I've, I've come up with for what I've seen in my experience, especially with my wife being an MD. And there's a lot more as well that I could share. And I would love to in another video. If you would like to see, let me know in the comments below, if you'd like to see a practical application, like kind of like a Paul Beloche video, you know, those videos where he's like in a, in a room with other musicians and they're like talking and they're playing. It's like how to play a really good worship song, right? Like, like the perfect set list and with Paul Beloche. Like if that's a video you want to see, let me know in the comments below. I can make that happen. I think that would be a lot of fun. Um, but other than that, I think that's everything I have. I'm going to list that stuff below. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you got value out of this video, also let me know by liking it. I would really appreciate it. And if you want to see more videos just like this, just tips on becoming a better worship leader, pastor, and worship musician, teammate, and even tutorials. I love doing tutorials, learning how to play the next worship song. Like I'm going to keep doing that too man, I, I encourage you to subscribe. And uh, I see I see this channel as a ministry and I want to be able to share and um, empower, equip, and encourage you to be able to lead worship well. So thanks for watching this video. We'll see you in the next one. Let me get started. Is it time to get started or is it time for play? This is my dog. This is Desmond. No way for you to come. Okay, there's there you can't sit here or there. I guess I'll just love on him for a few minutes. <laughs>